This is Stacey McKibben with the Master Communicator Podcast, where CEOs, senior leaders, and C-suite executives share their advice. It's six questions in nine minutes because the best leaders know how to share their ideas concisely and quickly. Let's jump right in. Question number one. In a few sentences, tell me who you are and what you do. Well, thanks for having me. I'm Michael Nevins, and I'm CMO at Smart Ad Server, which is a global ad tech company headquartered in Paris. I'm based in New York, and I manage a team of 13, and I'm a member of the company's strategic board. That's amazing. How long have you worked there? It was just three years in mid-May. That's cool. What did you do before that? Before that, I ran product marketing globally at a company called Taboola. Very good. I've heard of that before, actually. <laughs> That's awesome. Sure. Well, thanks for being on the show. Really excited to have you. Question number two for you. Sorry about that. <laughs> That's okay. All good. What's the best thing about leading people from your perspective? This will be a quick two-part answer. Mentoring them and watching them grow. And what would you say is, is there about mentoring them? Well, I like be coaching and I like helping people learn how to grow and lead. Uh, I'm not a sports guy, but if I wasn't really into team sports, I would love being a coach because I love to help people learn and how to perform. And I love when they come back and teach me things I didn't know. So that f is much more fun for me than the more, ac uh, what's the word, uh, organizational aspects of, of management. I'm much more into mentoring and, and helping people progress in their career and in their tasks. That's awesome. That actually leads me perfectly into my next question, which is I often hear from other leaders, business would be great if it weren't for that pesky people part. <laughs> I'm curious, what are your thoughts about that? Well, managing people definitely has its challenges. Uh, as I mentioned, there are parts of it I love. It can be really gratifying when it goes well. It can also be very painful when it doesn't. <laughs> and I think we all, if we've managed people, we, we've experienced that. And uh, mm -hmm. I often hear from junior people on my team and elsewhere how they aspire to uh, gain experience by managing others. That's part of their typical ambition. And I always try to remind them that it takes a real investment of time and effort. Uh, it takes a while to get new employees ramped up, to get them productive. Um, and that usually takes a while before they'll feel the benefits. Yeah. Do you feel the same way too about, um, you know, even kind of clients and things? Have you ever heard that even business would be great if it weren't for the, the, the darn clients that are taking up all of our time? <laughs> well, yeah. Um, I started my career in sales, so I've spent a lot of time with clients over the years, and that can be the most gratifying and most painful part as well. The parallels definitely apply. <laughs> so, um we all need clients and I love them when they're good and I hate when they're not happy and it does happen occasionally in any business. Um, but when you find a good way to make them happy again, to uh, build trust and um, gratitude, it generally serves you for long-term relationships. That's amazing. I totally agree. Um, and as you talk about, you know, kind of the complexities of kind of navigating the people world, right? Mm -hmm. That leads me really to, to the next question, which is, um, what piece of advice about communication? Because oftentimes that is at the core of the challenge. Would you agree, right? Um, miscommunication or misunderstandings. Sure. Um, so what advice about communication would you give to other leaders or would-be leaders? Yeah, I tend to think about this in a couple of different ways. Um, I was almost embarrassed when you refer to leaders or even possibly me as a master communicator because it's a lifelong effort of trying to improve. Um, so I think about spoken communication and written communication is a little bit differently. So I'll start with spoken if that's okay. Yeah. Um, and these are all things I'm still working on, just to be clear. Um, I think it's important to ask questions and to listen more than you talk. Um, our format today doesn't allow me to ask you too many questions. So forgive <laughs> me for that. Um, I think listening actively and sincerely is really important. There's a lot written on this topic, particularly recently. Um, you shouldn't just be waiting for your next turn to speak. People can feel that and it's important to avoid that, uh, that problem. It's also important not to feature, uh, to finish other people's sentences uh, unless they signal that they need your help. For example, I work with a lot of people who are native French speakers and with English as a second language, they sometimes struggle with certain words and I have to be on the lookout for those clues of when they want me to help them uh, as opposed to let them think and finish. Um, 
so that's a, that's another one that takes some time. Um, as I said, I'm working on all these things, but I think active listening is a topic that's pretty uh, public out there. And I think it's an important thing for us all to really consider, are we being heard properly and are we hearing the people that we're communicating with? So that's important from uh, within the context of spoken communication. Now with written communications, I'm a little more, um, what's the word, uh, deliberate about a process. So. I do both internal and external communications in my role. My team manages uh, everything from PR to internal communications. So we, uh, and product marketing in between is the way I like to put it. So I think that the process can vary, but the principles apply in both cases here. So first of all, prepare early, prepare, prepare, prepare. Um, it's really important to know your audience and to know what drives them. So it's, critical to work really hard to take their perspective. Understand what your employees might be thinking. Understand the language that your audience uses, the way they think about things. And empathy plays a really big role here. And in order to have those insights, you have to do the research. Um, I'd also suggest to everybody, put the project away and visit repeatedly. Um, I've said some brilliant things that the next day, once I saved the document and opened it again, were really not so brilliant. Um, so <laughs> I think it's important, just like when you have that angry email and you're sort of taught to save the draft and wait before you send it, most likely mm -hmm. you'll edit it. I really believe in that. It's, it's really hard to get the project done in one sitting. Uh, and I also really believe in testing to get feedback. So it's important to get feedback from a diverse audience. Um, and ideally it's people who challenge you, not people who just love the way you talk and love the things that you write. There's so much there that's amazing. I love, you know, a lot of the how to's, but one of the things that really spoke to me there was, you know, let them think and finish, right? So that that whole, you know, not filling in the gaps for them. Um, and I love the way that you talk about preparedness. We talk about practice all the time. You know, what you think you're going to say, but what you actually say <laughs> can oftentimes be two different things, right? Indeed. Brilliant. Totally brilliant. What other successful business leaders like yourself, Michael, should be on the show? You know, who else should we be paying attention to? Oh, that's a good one. And I, I wish I had like a long list of people, you know, they, it's like that, uh, that dinner party question, if you could have dinner with anybody from history, who would it be? I never have a good answer for that. But one that comes to mind, I, I'm very impressed and always like to point out women who are impressive leaders because they don't get enough attention. And I'll selfishly name one within my own company. Um, so we have an EVP of Europe who's a great leader. Her name is Ingrid, I'll struggle to say it properly, uh, the French last name, but it's pronounced essentially croissant. Uh, not croissant, but croissant, essentially, if I'm <laughs> saying it sort of more deliberately than she would. Um, and she'll probably laugh at me later if she sees this. Um, but in any case, I laugh at their English too, so it's fine. Um, but Ingrid <laughs> it's is a, fair. <laughs> fair enough. Ingrid is a really strong leader. Um, she runs our uh, business operations in Europe, and I'm a big fan of hers, in case you can't tell from smile on my face absolutely thank you for the shout out especially to the ladies that's Indeed. always nice to hear all right magic question number six for you tell us about your favorite boss or teacher who's really influenced you so it's interesting because about eight months ago i had lunch with this person for the first time we hadn't seen each other in a couple of years and it and i took the opportunity to, to deliberately tell him some of the things i had learned from him um and so it, it comes to mind readily um and I've had many great bosses, but this is just an example of one who I've learned from. Um, and we only worked together for about a year, so it's nice that it happened. His name is Ben Kartsman. And at the time, Ben was the CEO at a company called Spuncell, which uh, was acquired. And now he's, I think, COO at the new company. And two things stood out. Um, he encouraged me to challenge him. He was not interested in politics in the work setting. He encouraged me to challenge him even in public settings. And part of that was to encourage, to demonstrate the behavior and to encourage others to challenge me publicly. And that can make a lot of people uncomfortable. It's not typically the political you know, thing to do within a company if you want to survive, but he insisted yeah. upon it. And he taught me to see that feedback and other feedback as a gift. And it didn't naturally come to me. It didn't come to me naturally at first is the way to put it. Um, but over time, I've learned to become more and more comfortable with taking criticism, direct and indirect, publicly, privately. And while it can still be painful, uh, 
it's really, really valuable. And so that was a really strong lesson that he taught me without even being deliberate about it. He, uh, he demonstrated it. And then when I questioned it, he was deliberate about teaching me and explaining why it was important. That's amazing. Um, well, thank you so much for sharing that. It's been an absolute pleasure having you on the show. Um, I learned a ton. It's, a, it's I always say, oh, um, I do this, uh, you know, I, I, I think you're number 80, 81 on, on the list. And I still hear new answers to these questions, which just blows me away, right? It just shows you how powerful um, the simplicity of it is. That's great. I'm, I'm glad I could help and was happy to do it with you. So thank you. How can people find you if they want to reach out and learn more about you or say hi? Thank you. Well, I'm uh, emailable. Um, and if you want to put that on screen, I won't bother to spell it all out. i um, sure. always happy to hear from people who uh, are relevant for any possible reason. I'm active on LinkedIn and on Twitter. I'm at M Nevins at M N E V I N S on Twitter. And um, I can be found on LinkedIn under Michael Nevins. And uh, yeah, I'm always happy to hear from people. That's awesome. Well, good. Well, I hope somebody reaches out because there's clearly a lot of, of generosity and gift that you have to share there. So um, we're very grateful for that. And this is Stacey McKibben with the Master Communicator Podcast. For more ideas and insights, please do go check us out at www.conciliateam.com. And we look forward to seeing you again next time. Take care.